Hi guys, it's uh, Raymond here with the Pioneer Channel. This is my dog Kilo. And uh, today I'm just going to be showing you guys some of my gear that I got, or pretty much all of my gear. And yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to start off the backpacks. I got two of them. This one's a 70 liter Osprey backpack. And yeah, I use this for mainly bigger trips. And it's kind of nice because uh, this top uh, lid, you can pop it off and use that as like a little separate backpack if you want. And this one's just my uh, overnighter slash day trip type backpack. And this backpack is uh, it's called a Slumberjack. It's kind of a hunting backpack. This front piece comes off as well. Anyway, that's that for this, for the backpack. Oh, here's one of my newer pieces of gear I'm pretty pumped about that my uncle gave me so big shout out to my uncle and uh, thank you very much I appreciate it uh, he gave me his uh, his compound bow which is about 30 some years old or some somewhere around there but it's got a 70 pound draw on it and he gave me a bunch of accessories too that came with it he gave me a bunch of arrows, he gave me a little drum that uh, has like fishing line so he could uh, do some bow fishing. And yeah, he gave me like uh, an arm protector and uh, finger grips and a bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff. Like, <laughs> way more than I would have expected anyway. <clears throat> so, big thank you. So I'll be making a video about this sometime whenever the snow melts. So you guys stay tuned for that. And some of you guys might have seen the slingshot before. I made a video, it's called the Judge G3 Slingshot, and it's got a light so you can do some shooting at night. And yeah, it shoots really hard. <laughs> the only downside is that it's a little bit bulky, but like this shoots harder than pretty much anything I got. Other than that bow, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and yeah, it's got a attachment, like right in the front. I'll just show you guys quick. There's a, like a little thing there where you put the there's a arrow rest so you can shoot arrows. I'm gonna be making another video on the Judge G3 here pretty soon. Also when the weather gets a little nicer. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good hunting tool. And for another slingshot, I made this one homemade. I made five of them, so if you guys are interested in one, go check out my Facebook page. I think I got like three left. Anyway, but yeah, this thing's super accurate because there's a sight on top of there. And yeah, that makes it super accurate. Doesn't hit as hard as this but this is way, way more accurate. To go with the slingshot stuff, I got a whole drawer. This is extra rubber bands. And inside this box, I got a whole lot of other stuff. I got a red dot sight. I got some, oh, those are arrow tips. Here's the arrow rest I was talking about for the Judge G3. Extra rubber bands. This is a... Uh, uh, trigger release so if you put the ball here and you pull back you just pull the trigger and then lets the ball th the ball go and then yeah I just got some repair kits and stuff for pretty much all my all my shooting stuff for my judge g3 so that so that's pretty much everything for the slingshot stuff and uh, I guess next I'm gonna show you guys is my paddle as you guys, uh, some of you guys might know, I ordered a, a kayak, a Delta 17 to be exact. So it's a 17 long foot uh, kayak. It's made in uh, Surrey, BC in Canada. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I got the green one. But anyway, yeah, check out this. Uh, these are handmade carbon fiber paddles. So they're ultra light, I think with both sides on. Weighs 27 grams, so just over maybe a pound and a half. So that's pretty pretty light. And it's got the water guard so you don't get splashed. But yeah, it's all handmade at Sawyer Paddles. Great product. So I'm super pumped to, <laughs> for the snow to melt so I could go kayaking here. Woo! I should be picking it up sometime uh, next week, sometime hopefully. <laughs> But if I go get it, I have to go drive about seven hours to pick it up. So I'll bring you guys along for the trip. And up next, I'll show you. These are just uh, boot grips. If you watch uh, I don't know, this video up here or somewhere, <clears throat> you'll be able to see them in action. But they just go around your boot. 
And yeah, basically just so you don't slide around. Nothing too fancy here. These are awesome. These are the best snowshoes I've ever used in my life. They're like so light. They're like incredibly light. And they are the Symbios Elite Snowshoes with the Hyperflex. So they basically flex. So if you're walking in like weird terrain, they'll actually like flex to the, yeah, the terrain around you. The snowshoe, so you get the optimal grip and check out these grips. So these snowshoes are fantastic on ice. Like you're not gonna slide around at all. You can climb straight uphill. And another nice feature, if you're climbing uphill, you just pop that down and then it keeps you kind of more level and doesn't fatigue your legs so fast. Super nice. And then there's carbon fiber here. So like when it flexes and you're walking, you're like, it gives you like a little spring in your step. So, but the best feature that I don't see on any other snowshoe is this. It's a snowboard style uh, binding. So you just stick your foot in, ratchet it in, and then ratchet it in and that's it. And to take it off, simple. Squeeze, pull, then you're done. And that is it. That's the best snow snowshoe binding ever. And for the front, just stick your toe in here and then you shut that and then that is it. So big time saver and they're so light. I know I said that like 10 times, but ugh. They are the best, but they were a little expensive. I had to import them from France. So. All right. Up next, I got a dry bag. This is it's just a mech dry bag. Nothing too special about this. It's just rubber material, 30 liters. So, I don't know. I used it a couple times, not too many. Maybe like winter camping or I'll probably be using it more now that I got a kayak. But yeah, pretty much only use them to keep some stuff dry when I'm winter camping. I got some aftermarket uh, tent pegs. I lost one though. <laughs> My last winter camping trip is, <laughs> I think it was minus 33, but in the morning, I couldn't get the one peg out. It was like pulling so hard. I even broke the, the rope that was tied around it and I was too cold, so I just, Got the hell out of there, and I was like, oh, I'll just get it when the, when the snow melts, I guess. So, <clears throat> but yeah, these work a lot better than the, the standard pegs that you get with your tent because uh, there's more surface area, so it's harder to pull out. <clears throat> you could even go look on the YouTube, uh, look up like uh, peg, uh, tent peg comparisons, and uh, I think it took 40 pounds of like just pulling straight up for the guy to, uh, to yank this out of the ground. He even had like a, a scale to measure how, uh, how much force it takes to pull it out. And yeah, it was right around 40 pounds. And then the regular ones that you get with your tent, I think it was like seven pounds of pressure pulling out. So there's quite a difference. So when it's windy, that'll be very helpful. Now I'm gonna show you guys my tarp setup. This is uh, my tarp, it's a DD tarp. They're pretty nice. Uh, the camo on this is Pretty badass. Uh, there's also another video on YouTube you can go check out. It's like a camo comparison for tarps, and within like a 50 meters or 50 meters or something like that, they had like three different colors: the green and the brown. Also, and they were comparing it with this one. You can't see this one at all. At like 50 meters, and the rest, you can just see them like no tomorrow. Cool. And then uh, I got tree straps for my my hammock because you're gonna want tree straps or else if you use like just a regular thin rope, it's actually, it'll actually harm the tree. So I recommend everybody using tree straps. And to go with that, I got a ultra light hammock. It's a Eno sub seven. So it's less than seven ounces. And then I got a, this is just a bug net that goes around it. So if there's a lot of mosquitoes and crap like that, I use that. So it's a sketch one. I'll be using this a lot. When I'm in Alberta, I don't really need it because <laughs> there's like no bugs out there for some reason. And to go with that, I got a little lantern. Turns on, there's three different brightnesses and there's like an SOS and a blink mode. And it's a battery pack to charge batteries. <clears throat> and I like this because if I have like a, a guy line, I just clip it on and then just hangs there and I have it over top of my hammock, <clears throat> which is pretty nice. So I don't have to always have a headlamp because I'm not really a fan of headlamps, but I'm starting to 
I'm starting to like him a little more. All right, now I'm gonna bring you guys a little closer. I'm gonna sh now I'm gonna bring you guys a little closer, and I'll show you guys some of my uh, cooking gear that I use when I go camping. All right, this is a grilly put. It's a grill. You pop these out, and inside there's a bunch of little rods like this. And then there's, this pops in half, and then you pretty much just stick them, and then there'll be a grill like this big, 16 inches, I think. And I'll get set it up. <laughs> you guys can go find pictures. This is a Grilly Put Quattro. They also make a smaller one, the Grilly Put Duo. I think it's like half the size. But I bought the big one just because I like to eat. I like to eat. For this, <laughs> I always kill, carry a little steel wool just so I can clean my gear. And then this is a Snow Peak. I think 600, so 600 milliliters or something like that. It's made of titanium, so it's ultra light. And in here, it's pretty nice. It fits another, another little gas container. So I just stick that in there. And then this fits in there too. And this is uh, the burner. And then these pop out. Very nice little unit. This is a Optimus. Optimus, there you go. And it just folds away. Pull this down. Folds. Pretty much just bought this setup because it fits all in this little can and takes up zero room, like nothing at all. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> but this thing is pretty expensive. This little uh, uh, Snow Peak uh, 600. So uh, I don't know, I'm kind of a wuss. Like everybody just throws them right in the fire, but like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want it to like get all suited up and wrecked and ugh, warped maybe. So I don't know. I try not to use it on the bare fire. If anything, I'll put it like right beside the fire so it still gets the heat, but not. I won't put it like right in there. Maybe one day when it gets older and I don't really care about it as much, I might do that, but <laughs> till then, that's what I do. Oh, I forgot to measure, er, mention, it also has a little, Separate little thing that comes with it. It has a measuring cup. And this is the last thing for my my cook kit. It's just a stainless steel, I don't know, water bottle. This one I throw in the fire though, because I don't really care about it. Got it for free. Just threads in there and yeah, good to go. So nothing too fancy about this one. <laughs> this is basically my shelter setup, other than the tarp. I like to use my tarp though. It makes me feel more hardcore. <laughs> and it saves a lot of weight. This is my chair. Really knocks. I'll probably just throw a picture up on the screen so you guys see what it looks like unfolded. This is a uh, hooped bivy. So it's pretty light. This thing is actually really light. Uh, I bought it, but I don't like to use it in the winter just because of condensation issues. So this is more like a summertime thing. Takes no room at all. And I'll throw a picture up on the screen so you can see what it looks like. It's an Aqua Quest uh, Hoop Bivy. You guys can also look that up too. And they're pretty decently priced. And this is my one person tent. It's a Marmot Tungsten one person, obviously, 1P. And I got two of these because uh, I went camping with my dog. You guys can watch the video somewhere up here. But uh, he was having a nap inside the tent. <laughs> And uh, he looks so cozy, so I was like, I just zip the door up. I'm like, oh, he looks so cute. And then I go and do something else, and then next thing you know, he's standing, standing beside me. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just wagging his tail, being all happy. And I go to the tent, big freaking hole on the side. I'm like, ah. <laughs> uh, I was not impressed. I bought another one. The one with the big hole, I use when I go camping with Kilo. One, uh, Without the hole, I use when I don't go with Kilo. So <laughs> that's the story on that. But you guys can check out the video; it's pretty good. This is my Ultra Lights pillow. It's inflatable. You just pull it out of there and blow her up. It's about this big. Just regular pillow. This is my saw. Flips it out like that. Put that in there, and voila, that is that. I prefer this, uh, the buck style saws compared to the, the little fold out ones. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the fold out saws just because uh, 
I find them flimsy and I don't know, just not my thing. I'd rather have like a little buck saw and it takes just as much room as a folding saw. So I might as well go with something a little fancier. And yeah, folds up really nice. I like it. This is a Gerber Free Skate saw. Now I got two folding shells. One's a little bigger than the other. The reason I got this one, my buddy wanted to get rid of it. He gave me a re really good deal on it, and it's smaller than this one. So, and this one's all metal. This one, the handle's plastic. So that's another reason why I kind of wanted this one. But yeah, just folds out. And you just screw this. And then tightens, and that's it. You could also put it in this position too if you want to, like, oops, if you want to, like, dig in, like, snow, like, I don't know. You do it like that too. That is this one. North 49 is the brand. Nothing special. Got a Bass Pro Shop. So the Sog. This one's pretty cool though. <laughs> like it's the size of my hand. Look at that. And yeah, unfolds. And this one, you can do the same thing. You dig like that. And on the other side, there's a little pickaxe. And this one's, everything's metal on it. So that's pretty nice. And then uh, on the one side, there's a, Low saw blade, haven't tested that out. And uh, on this side, I might sharpen it and make it like a, so you can cut stuff. Other than that, that's my shovels. I usually like to take them when I'm uh, like winter, especially winter camping, cause like, I don't know, you can clear a little area out or if I wanna dig like a little fire pit or something, like these are perfect for that. And then here's my headlamp, just a, I don't know. I'm not even sure the brand. Energizer, I guess. My brother hooked me up this thing, so thanks. And then here's my first aid kit. Uh, nothing too fancy about here. I just keep some Purell to disinfect. I got some polysporin, I got rubber gloves, a bunch of band-aids, some bigger band-aids, some uh, butterfly. They're for like deep cuts. I forget what they're called, but. They're for deeper cuts anyway. They're like butterfly stitches or something like that. Then I got some gauze. Yeah, pretty much just a basic standard first aid kit. Got alcohol pads in there too, and just minor stuff. And then I got, I guess I'll show you this first. This is a survival blanket. I haven't used it yet, but just pulled it out of there. And it's like one of those really metallic uh, reflecting Sure, you guys seen them before. <laughs> and this is my compass. Super pumped about it. Haven't used it yet, but when I get my kayak, obviously I'll be using it a lot. Uh, Shani got it for me. Has a mirror in there. It's a Ranger Silva 515. Really nice, really nice piece of gear. And I got a little hatchet. I haven't used it in a while just because uh, one of the screws fell out, but the top one's still in there, but it's still, I don't know, kind of wobbles a little bit. And I kind of left it a little wet, so so much for stainless steel, eh? It's a little rusted. So you can tell I just keep all my stuff in a dresser. <laughs> I just brought everything downstairs to show you guys, but it's pretty much how I organize my stuff. And I write on the front what's in each one. So I'll be like, first aid plus, plus my main pouches and then cooking stuff. And, I don't know. I got a couple other... Uh, Drawers I'm not gonna bring down to show you guys, just basically my camera stuff. I could do a video on that if you want, but unless you guys want it, I'm not really gonna do it. And then I got another drawer full of craft stuff, which I like carve stuff, and I don't know if I wanna make like the slingshots I made, that's what I pretty much use that drawer for. And paint, I got a bunch of paint in there, and oils, and anyway, back to in here. I got a map case for when I get my kayak. Here are my main pouches. These are the Why Not brand. I don't know if you guys seen Joe Robinette's like when he, uh, Joe Robinette when he had his, uh, he was making those backpacks or whatever on uh, with the Why Not Not company. They had like a Kickstarter campaign, and I bought those off of there just because I was looking for pouches like that. And he uh, just at the time happened to be making some, so I was like, yeah, I might as well support Joe. <laughs> but yeah, I'll show you guys what's in them. My first uh, pouch, I got a Amora. It's getting pretty beat up though. It's a really good knife, really sharp. I bought this because it's got a 
Scandinavian grind on it, and that's good for like working wood. I use this to light my uh, air with my ferro rod. I just scrape it. But what I had to do, I had to use a file, and I filed it flat on top, so that so then it would scrape, or else just stock. It's pretty round on on the edges, so it won't do it. You need to file it down just a little bit. This is my Ranger Grip 57 knife. I love this thing. I would never go without it. You open her up. And then it's got a, you push this button in to release the blade. It's a lock blade, so you push that in to release it. It's got a pretty good size saw, like bigger than my finger. It's a gutting blade on there. And it's got a couple of other things. If you guys want a more detailed uh, list of stuff that's on here, I'll just link up my other video, I don't know, one of those corners. This is uh, my knife sharpener. I used to use uh, whetstone, but then <clears throat> I discovered this thing. This is a work sharp uh, guided uh, field sharpener. And this thing just hauls ass. Like you want a sharp knife, use this. The thing I like about it is that it has literally everything you need. There's ceramic, uh, a, sharp, a ceramic sharpener, a rough uh, diamond sharpener. There's a finer grade uh, diamond. And there's a strop on there, and then there's a there's a little spot to sharpen the serrated uh, blades on there too. If you guys want to see this video in more detail, I'll also link it up here somewhere. This is my current ferro rod. I just ordered a new one because I got bored the other day, and I carved myself a handle for my new ferro rod. So imagine that. Ooh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So yeah, this is my new handle for my new ferro rod. I ordered a firesteel.com uh, ferro rod. And yeah, what do you guys think I should name this guy? <laughs> I'm gonna be asking you guys in the next like three or four videos, like what I should name this guy? Because <laughs> I wanna see what kind of interesting, in, uh, interesting names come up. Whatever name I pick from one of you guys, I'll just give you guys a little shout out in the video when I pick it. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I'm super pumped. I got some tenacious tape. Uh, what this is, it's just like a rip stop material, which is tape. And if you got like a hole or something in like your tent, you stick this on and it's not gonna come off. Quick fix. And then I got pocket chainsaw. Fits in there. If you guys wanna see this thing in action, I built a bridge that's 21 feet long and 10 feet high in the back country in the, kind of ask us, uh, base hills of the Rocky Mountains in Alberta. So if you guys want to see this thing, go check it out. Right there. I always forget. I should remember this one day. <laughs> and these are the handles. There's two of them for that chainsaw. And then lip saw. It's kind of getting gross looking, but whatever. So that is this pouch. What do you guys think of this guy? I kind of messed up. Like I was watching how to antique like carvings and they just slop paint on it, wipe it off and then kind of leaves it in the marks. But their carvings are already painted. <laughs> I did this just on bare wood. So it kind of stained it a gross color. So I kind of like abandoned shit on that. But that's my first carving. I'm pretty proud of it. I never carved before this. Well, I tried last year, but then I pretty much sliced my finger open. I had to get like eight stitches on it. So I didn't try until this year. <sighs> Ba bam That's what I think. Pouch number two. This one's a smaller pouch. This is mostly my cooking stuff. So I got uh, spices in this little container. My toothbrush. I always brush my teeth in the woods. I don't care. Toothpaste. I got a lighter as a backup. I never use it. So I don't know why I even bother. And then uh, some uh, cooking oil. This used to be like a little hot sauce container, like the little tester bottles or whatever. This is a glass. You just pull up on it and voila. This is uh, what I use for my utensils. I don't have a spork, but this is a spoon and it has a fork and then they split in half when you open them. And then let's say you need your fork and a knife. You can fold down the spoon and then then you have a fork and a knife, so it's pretty good. Don't ask me where I got it, because I forget. I think we're in like a small town, and we just stopped at like a random little 
you know, thrift store type thing and I saw these things, so we're like, mm, that's pretty dope, we're gonna buy them. And then you simply just connect this, the, oop, like this, there you go. Then you shut that and then that holds it in place. Then I got a little sewing kit in case I need it. I'm not even gonna throw, throw one back in. That is that. I used to use this little guy though. Check it. It's pretty much the same thing. Open it, open it, and then they pop apart. But this one's like a little baby spoon for Christ's sake. So, so when I saw that other one with a big spoon, I'm like, ah, this one's gotta go. That's just what I thought. I was like, Phew. didn't even think. <laughs> I was just like, I need that one. This one has gotta go. <laughs> what do you guys think of my shirt? <laughs> Shani's like, don't wear it in your video, but I'm like, I wanna. <laughs> it's a bunch of chickens. I like it. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Here's a couple other things I forgot to show you guys that I got. Throwing knives. And I got this puck. So sharpen axes is what this is. This side's rough, this side's smooth. And you just kind of sharpen it in circles. Good thing I showed you guys that because I forgot to bring down my axe. <laughs> and you think that's pretty important stuff. So let's go upstairs and uh, hopefully it's not dirty up here. Oh yeah, it's good. It's all good. You guys can't see the floor anyway. Oh, that's just a bottle of water, trust me. That's my, my axe, it's a Gerber. I like it, it's uh, really light. And yeah, that's pretty much it. See, that's where I keep all my stuff. Uh, might as well just show you guys everything. Hey? I got like gloves and paracord stuff. Like, don't need to show you guys that. That's my spindle, or this is my spindle hearth board I made. And I made a bearing block back in the day. I, use, I still use them. Like this is my craft drawer, just typical stuff. And then my camera, this is all my camera gear. I'm not going to show you guys that. Ho, ho, ho. <clears throat> I guess I could show you guys my closet though. It's pretty sweet. I got my sleeping bags. I keep them like right back there. I don't know if you guys can see really good. Hold on. I got three sleeping bags. If you guys want me, I'm not going to like show you guys right now just because that's a whole video on its own. If you guys want to see like my sleeping system, like what I use, like I got a couple of different sleeping bags that are for different ratings and stuff. Cause nobody wants to go camping in plus 30 degrees with a negative 30 sleeping bag, right? <laughs> I've done it. It sucks. Yep, this is the closet. Got a dartboard there. Actually I got three dartboards, but one's a, and that's supposed to be golf. And this is the throw line right there. All right, back downstairs we go. All right, um, so that's my gear. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you got any recommendations for me to tweak my gear, I'd like to hear that. Or if you got some pretty cool gear that would go good with my stuff, let me know too. Cause I'm always like trying to upgrade my gear and trying to make a better system. I'm no pro, but I try <laughs> and try and uh, learn as much as I can, like on my own and figure out from there. But I'm always like down for feedback as well. So <clears throat> that's all my gear, basically. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video on my sleep system, cause I got some, actually I might just make one anyway. And if you guys want to see some of my sleeping bag gear, go watch my uh, latest video. I will also link it somewhere up here. You guys can go watch it. I went camping in negative 33. <clears throat> Uh, Celsius, so that's like, I don't know, 31 maybe Fahrenheit, I don't know, somewhere around there. Pretty freaking cold though. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I'm gonna stop rambling. Thanks for watching. Yeah, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you guys aren't subscribed, uh, join the Pioneer Crew, because uh, we're trying to build an empire here. <laughs> And check out my Facebook. I'm really active on there. And my Instagram too. I'll put them on the screen here with the link. But they're also in the description way at the bottom. I always put like uh, survival type posts and stuff like that. And bushcraft related stuff. Pretty much anything related to the outdoors. <clears throat> so yeah. Go check that out. Like the page. Follow me on everything. And yeah. Check out Kilo. He's just bathing in the sun.
Oh. Kilo wants you guys to subscribe too. Hey, bud. Kilo. Kilo. Tell them, buddy. <laughs> He's like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave Kilo alone, they said. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <What? laughs> yeah, if you guys want to see Kilo in videos too, he'll be there. I don't bring him out too much in the winter just because he's a little pit bull, so he's like short haired dog. In the summer, I bring him out more often, so. Yep, all right. I talked enough. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully. <clears throat> Hopefully we're road tripping to Calgary to pick up my kayak. So you guys better be there for that. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Peace.